After the success of Carry On Sergeant, producer Peter Rogers and director Gerald Thomas quickly realized that they were onto something good. And if they could keep their eye on the pennies, surely the pounds would look after themselves. Well, I mean, if you're looking at Peter Rogers as a producer, you would have to say, cautious would be the first word that one would summon up. He didn't splash money about at all. He was conscientious. Profit was king, and Rogers would take a royal pride in the carry-on film's low budgets and short schedules, aided by a sharp director who'd started out in the cutting room. Jerry Thomas, clinical. He had edited the show before it was even shot, I'm quite sure. There was one instance where I, going to a door, and I said, to him, when I get to the door, can I just turn round? And he said, no, as soon as you touch the door handle, I've cut, I'm outside and you're coming out. And he'd already cut that shot before he'd filmed it. And that was the way they were made. That was it, so I shut up after that. <laughs> after the success of Sergeant, Rogers and Thomas decided on a uniform approach for the follow-up. Supposing I've been on it. In one of his shrewder moments, the adorable Mr. Rogers said, well, they're all screaming for another movie. Your wife's a nurse, isn't she? He said, so it's carry on nurse, it's obvious. Hoodis quickly turned to wife Rita for inspiration. Over here, Mr. York. And I did that script in 10 days. You, um, given one of these before? Oh, good gracious, hundreds. <laughs> Get it down now. Other nurse. Plenty of material from Rita and exaggerated invention by me. Hurry up, nurse. There are other things for you to do, you know. Yes, sister. The carry-on creators were quick to work out that the public loved humour from everyday life, sweeping up with a dose of comedy intended for all. What's going on? Matron's round. Oh. I don't care if she's triangular. To this day, everyone's got experience of being in hospital, so you base your comedy around familiarity, so you don't have to waste any time explaining what's going on. Um, you can go straight into the, the bedpan comedy and, and you start getting your laughs. <laughs> After his debut in Sergeant, Nurse saw Charles Hawtrey tucked up in bed. The 44-year-old was already an old pro, his first film appearance being at the age of seven in a silent movie. Hawtrey took his stage name from a knight of the realm, Sir Charles Hawtrey, and encouraged the suggestion that he was his son, distancing himself from his working-class roots. He grew up on the stage before venturing into the world of Ealing comedies. Is that be all right? Yeah, yeah, sounds like it. No matter what I wrote, he would uh, quietly pull it aside and say, thank you, Norman, and then ad-lib about half an hour. Charles Hawtrey would make 23 carry-on appearances, just one less than an actress who would become known as the first lady of carry-on. Although a RADA graduate, Joan Sims found life as a jobbing actor tough and spent years in repertory theatre before finally breaking into television. She joined the carry-on gang for the first time on the set of Nurse. Yes, sister? I thought I told you to ring the bell. Well, I did, sister. Then why are the visitors still here? Well, I don't know. I Joan Sims was a fascinating woman who, and she was gentle, actually, very gentle personality and genuinely funny off screen. And raising more temperatures in her second carry on, Shirley Eaton. You know, nursing training is right out of date. What do you mean? Well, they should have taught you that there isn't always a medical reason for a fast pulse. Carry on nurse for me was my favorite role and my favourite film out of all the carry-ons. See that Mr York doesn't fall over in the bath. In Carry On Nurse, I discovered I was two months pregnant with my first son, which was terribly exciting, and all the cast were lovely with me. That's when the community feeling started between us all, because in Carry On Nurse, nobody was the star. Everybody was the star. It was really very shared. 
and there was a, ooh, it was a big cast, wasn't it? And joining that gang was the suave, sophisticated Leslie Phillips, whose character Jack Bell would deliver the very first carry-on catchphrase. Hello, chaps. Mr. Bell. Ding dong, you're not wrong. <laughs> this way, please. I wrote it in for him, Hello. and he said, ding dong, and it stuck. Mr. Bell. Ding dong, carry on. <laughs> With a combination of returning cast, catchphrases and surgical slapstick, the carry-ons were starting to take shape. Not you, you idiot. Him. Look, I don't think I will have gas after all. The laughing gas scene is beautifully acted. Kenneth Williams walks in, who has just learned how to be a surgeon, supposedly from a book. <laughs> Better give him some more gas. We can't have him giggling all through. It's distracting. I agree. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> <coughs> Let's get the knives. <laughs> and you get a real sense that they're enjoying themselves in that scene. <laughs> Just, you know, um, blokes running amok, really. I say, say Oliver, what, what happens if anything goes wrong? <laughs> we have to amputate your leg. <laughs> But writer Norman Houdis had saved the biggest laugh till last. We have to carry out just one final test. Right, It'll only right. take a few minutes. That's all right. A now famous punchline was a late addition to the script thanks to a real life story told by Houdis's mother in law. She told me this joke. And we screamed with laughter. And I tucked it away. Come in. Colonel, whatever's going on? Come, come, Matron. Surely you've seen a temperature taken like this before? <laughs> yes, Colonel, many times. But never with a daffodil. Comedy often is a question of remembering a joke rather than inventing it. Carry On Nurse hit the funny bone with British cinema goers buying over 10 million tickets. Rogers and Thomas swiftly signed a five-year contract to deliver more of the same. The decade had been dominated by Ealing comedies like The Lady Killers, but by 1958, the fun-packed carry-on films had replaced them in the public's hearts 